Welcome back. It's segment two. It's still April the 24th, 2019. My guest in this segment is Darren Alexander, and we are going to be talking about, I don't know. So Darren, what are we talking about? Well, I thought we might talk first about this um, BC Timber Sales uh, auction. The uh, 1,300 hectares of land ad adjacent to the Juan de Fuca coastline on Vancouver Island. Whereabouts is it, do you know? Yeah, it's, it's running up pretty much from, from um, uh, Port Renfrew. A right. lot of it's around Port Renfrew. Um, uh, much of this territory that, that is the proposed, it's not proposed, it's, it's, it's sold. I think today was the deadline for the auction, so we should be finding out just who, who bought what parcels and, and what their schedule is for cutting. But um, they're, they're, they've, they've thought it was prudent to sell this land. It who, contains who sold it? a lot of, well, it's through BC Timber Sales. And BC Timber Sales is an agent on behalf of the government. So John Horgan. And my own MLA, um, Carol Jane. Yeah. yeah. Deputy Premier. Right. Thank you, John. Thank you, but Carol. And I, uh, I don't know anything about it. Maybe it's a great idea. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Everybody's having a hard time finding out how it might be a gr great idea. It was uh, Elphinstone Logging Focus, or they're known as ELF. They're a, an active uh, grassroots environmental organization. Together with Sierra Club BC, um, were the ones who were first on, the, um, on this in terms of you know the scheduled sale and the auction and and uh, and getting word out. Um, what's remarkable is that we know there's a lot of old growth in the, in this. Uh, so so we're talking about the most pristine parts of the rainforest accessible to us here in the southern Vancouver Island. So the last, um, the last of the little bits. The last of the little bits. Yeah. You know that B Port Renfrew, uh, they're, yeah. they're um, marketing themselves now as the, um, as the tall tree capital. Um, so they, Port Renfrew, by their business associations and by their mayor and council, are all on board for go moving in an environmentally sound direction. They, they, the writing's on the wall for them. They know economically where the income where where the where the potential is and 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 wh what sector is growing and it's all around environmental tourism and uh, so this doesn't make sense to anybody um, and then of course we have dr. Andrew Weaver a climate scientist holding the balance of power in this odd kind of you yeah. know Union that we that we have, but he's he's on the record for um, being behind a moratorium on old growth logging on more than one occasion in interview on in print and, and video he's he's made it plain his position that he would be he would he backs that idea that makes sense to him. Um, so you're saying he should do something. We're thinking he's the one to, to do something, maybe, right now. But what can he do? You know, well, what he can do... If he, he brings do, down the government, then uh, the liberals get back into power. It's messy, you know? but why bring... The, maybe he can just say, look, this has to happen. Even maybe. To, to save face, you would think that as a climate scientist, look, we don't need to <laughs> go over the, the value of standing trees, especially the, in the rainforest, and, you know, um, as a defense and rec you know one of the greatest defenses we have um, up against this kind of fierce climate change the warming that we're that's that we're experiencing um, but can you imagine the value of old, real old <laughs> yeah. I mean, think of what that's worth yeah uh, especially given that so many of them end up shredded because they're actually you know once they get so old. You know, they're, a little while ago, I saw I, somebody often. sent me a picture just on email. It was one of these huge, huge ships sailing from here either to the States or Europe or Asia, loaded with trees, 
the trees looked like this pen. The ship was so big that uh -huh. every tree just looked like a pen. Yeah. And it was a tree. Right. And they were, I mean, entire forests on yeah. that one ship. It was yeah. incredible. Yeah. And off they went. Yeah. And it doesn't matter, liberal, NDP, mm -hmm. conservative, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. It continues. Mm -hmm. Do you know, Jack, that the rate of decimation of our rainforest in BC, in terms of the volume, and the rate and the scale, so it s surpasses that of what's happening in the Amazon, in Brazil. That, it, it, you know, I came across the information yeah. that We're supports big. this, the research, um, uh, a little while ago, and it's been confirmed and verified now, and I've noticed even that um, some of our, you know, the NGOs are starting to uh, tout that. In fact, um, yeah, there was uh, one, um, oh, I could find it. A in any case, uh, using this, and, and the Globe and Mail and, and mainstream, some mainstream media has even picked it up and run with it. Just a little story with the headline that, that you know, it remarkably, it's, it would appear that, that our, um, our rate of deforestation is, is, has, is past that of what's happening in the Amazon. Does the Globe Mail portray this as a good news? <laughs> <laughs> I think they just dropped The Globe dropped Mail is owned by Canada's richest family, yeah. the Thompsons. So, I mean, yeah. I'm sure they're in the business. Yeah, they're in the business of, um, of, of turning those into fleeting stories. Yeah. So it's like uh, we're watching the planet be destroyed before our very eyes here in BC, you know. And, and what they've done, our ruling class, is they've got us fighting each other down here, right? In, mm. every, in every way possible. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should stop for one second. Sure. Are your eyes bothering you? No, I'm okay. Oh, okay. I, yeah. It's okay. I just sensitive to the lights. Yeah. Is but am I blinking a lot? Is that no, I just noticed you were, so I wanted okay. to be sure you were okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm pretty good. We'll just carry on. Okay. Let's move on to PEI. So I can tell you just a little bit more of okay. this, if, if, if you right don't ahead. mind. For just from, so the seven planned cut blocks come within 50 meters of the Juan de Fuca Provincial Park boundary. So that's something interesting right there. We have our Juan de Fuca Park. It's a gem, right? It runs from basically China Beach up through to, up to Port Renfrew. And uh, it, it, 50 meters. That's the, these clear cuts are proposed to come 50 meters to the boundary. And of I'm the sure park. the logging companies are saying, what's this 50 meters? <laughs> yeah, you know, they would the, like to take it. Yeah. Move in, Man it a little in Manitoba, bit more. years yeah. ago, and probably still, they log within provincial parks, and they'll probably they'll do it here too That's when the right. time comes. That's right. I mean, they've got the power, so they'll mm -hmm. just do what they want. It's, um, uh, yeah. yeah. They're estimating a loss of uh, about 1,300 logging trucks of <coughs> old growth from the tall tree capital of Canada. Well, that's not a loss to some. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are wondering, you know, are we going to see any change? So let's back up a bit. The forests are horribly mismanaged. Um, we know that for a fact. They were relying on a system they called professional reliance. All these years of the liberal government, the liberals imposed the system of professional reliance. And some might ask, well, what is the system of professional reliance? Professional reliance was the system whereby they would, they, the industry themselves were in charge of making sure that they weren't out of line. With the rule following the rules. Following the rules, yeah. professional reliance. So the professionals within the industry govern and oversee that same industry. Yeah. Yeah. It's total insanity. It's been working course. not so well. And well, that's why we've been seen, working very well. you know, all of those boundaries, um, the cuts close to the streams and the, yeah. the salmon bearing watersheds, you know, everything just being yeah. uh, just like there was no... Well, I've got some very bad news for you because uh -oh. I was involved with forestry issues uh, back when the NDP was in power in the 1990s uh -huh. 
uh, before the time of professional reliance. Right. There was some, but basically it was overseen by the Ministry of Forests. Uh -huh. And believe me, it was no different. It didn't work. No, much of course not. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. Yes. The corporations run the In province. Anyways. They yeah. own our governments. Yeah. They own the media. They want everything, and they're taking it. Everything else is just a game. They are taking it. And plus they're creating homelessness, plus they're creating the high house prices and high rents. They're just screwing everybody. Mm -hmm. We think it's something different. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all these little, but it's not. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It yeah. really is remarkable. Yeah, we need a revolution in this country. Yes. I'd, I'd say a democratic revolution. Mm -hmm. But the people we're up against, I mean, my God, they, no. they, they know how the game is played because they follow it through the ages, yes. right? And a change of system, elect election system is not okay. Prince Edward Island now um, yeah. confirms that <laughs> you can only ever get sort of just 50% and uh, then some, and it, but it will never pass. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, the vote in PEI happened yesterday. I haven't seen the actual number, mm. yes or no, they had a weird kind of system. Uh, there for was it something to pass else there. involved. It was yeah. based on these different kinds of segments, different populations, different uh, ridings right. almost, and each riding, according to the the agreed upon terms, needed was it like fifty one or something. They wanted to make sure that there was enough of a of a Balance. cover so that it would stick. Yeah, yeah. at least that was the premise. And um, they came in just shy, oddly, again. Yeah, well, here in BC, we saw, I saw what I thought happened. I mean, uh, people may disagree with me, but what I saw was a plan to make sure that PR didn't happen. The NDP leadership never wanted PR, in my opinion. The membership did, so they had to pretend. And yeah. the whole thing was a pretense. Yeah. So they brought in this voting system. Mm -hmm. <coughs> People wanted to know how did the three, how do the different things work? How does PR work? Mm -hmm. The NDP did nothing, 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 nothing to inform people. So nobody knew. The little groups tried, like Fair Vote Canada did their best, mm -hmm. but they're just too small. The government had the opportunity very easily to inform mm -hmm. people because once you see how it works, then you see how it's good. Mm -hmm. They allowed the no side to lie yeah. and never would co correct them. I mean, you can say what you want, but if you're stating facts that are incorrect, and mm -hmm. it's the Liberal Party of BC that's doing it, and plus these groups that are, you know, then somebody's got to just correct the record if yes. you're saying things that aren't true. And then the corporate media just went after PR with a stick, mm -hmm. day after day after day after day. It was vicious. Yeah. And uh, here in Victoria, the leading guy was uh, Adam Sterling from mm -hmm. uh, CFAX, I'd That's say. That's right. Yeah. Stirring up this idea that, that it would lead to well, yeah, kind of small a anarchy. Yeah. Yeah. Was, uh, and so, mm -hmm. you know, so we lost. And the reason they don't want it, all these arguments, it's got nothing to do with us or democracy or anything. They don't want it because proportional voting is more democratic. It gives people a little bit more of a voice and it lets us have a little more control over the politicians and our rulers. Mm -hmm. And so they don't want it, so yeah. it can't win. Yeah, and it keeps, uh, yeah, it tends to keep parties from having these kind of overwhelming majorities based on very little representation, com relatively speaking. Yeah, so it's a little bit, uh, could be uh, something, uh, it's positive in some ways, although we do see, you know, I I it's not like those countries with proportional representation are thriving no, no, <laughs> these no. days any either, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's all part. But for 20 or 30 years, I think in many ways, Northern Europe led the, led the world with good environmental, mm -hmm. good social, good societies. Mm -hmm. Now they're under attack because yes. the rulers don't want that. Yes. You know? Being asked yeah, in France, people want to work 35 hours a week instead of 45 for more money. You know, let's destroy France, and mm. they do. Mm. <laughs> but we're finished. We're going to come you back and do us. another segment. Thank you very much for watching this segment of Citizens Forum. Welcome back. Uh, it's still April the 24th. I'd like to thank again our volunteer crew and the Shaw staff that makes this program happen. Um, it's the same two of us, still me and Darren, but now it's the Darren and Jack show. So what are we going to talk about? Well, um, 5G. 
5G. To me, 5G is, is kind of amazing in that they're doing this to us and they don't even tell us. You know, there's this new technology. It involves uh, radiation um, that is everybody, well, a lot of people say it's dangerous. The industry says it's perfectly safe. The government says it's perfectly safe. But a lot of other people say it's dangerous. A lot of other governments say it's dangerous. A lot of other governments say The city of Brussels has blocked it. Switzerland has opened a commission into it. But here, it's full speed ahead. So they're basically putting this stuff it's like there used to be the cell towers here and there dotted across the city which are bad but now they're replacing that with basically something on every block mm -hmm. a radiation transmitter on every block and this is to facilitate things we really need like driverless cars and you know because they need a new level of technology and of mm -hmm. course you got to be able to watch a four-hour movie in 10 seconds mm -hmm. or whatever whatever benefits mm -hmm. we get and Nobody will say a word about the health impacts mm -hmm. or even that it's being put on our streets. Even when they come to your house, uh, you know, Walt uh, said the guys from TELUS came to their house and kind of gave them a half truth yes. in order to get, get his approval to install it. I experienced that in Souk, yeah, the yeah. same. Yeah, and when I, when I inquired further, then they come clear about, they, probably, they were doing it in a really shady way. There's no doubt about it. And, and it, it's, a, it's an infrastructure, it's a huge infrastructure development project, you know. They're, they've been setting up little, um, little, almost like little depots, like, to work out of because they, they need to spend some time in different, you know, quadrants of, of locales to, to get this work done. So they've been, and they've, you know, they're crossing, they're putting it up everywhere. So. It's huge. Do you know what they look like? Yeah, the actual fixtures are something like, they tend to be, have a whitish kind of metallic casing, I think, and, and there's something about this size. The wire's coming out of the top. And, and wired up onto a telephone up pole. Up onto the telephone, yeah, yeah, the poles, yeah. yeah. So the, the, um, the, rate, the signals that come, the, the 5G signals, they can't, um, they need more of a direct line of sight to operate because they're a uh, shorter wave. Is that right? I, I think so. And um, so they, uh, and, uh, but because they, they are known and, and they, they don't pass so well through um, the solid objects, which you know, would suggest also, that's one of the concerns, of course, around human beings. You know, we're not solid, but we're semi-solid. And uh, these things don't pass through things all that well. So, so yeah, I am, it's uh, interesting. And it's uh, crazy. It's more of just um, swallowing the technology, you know, where the technology leads and people have really are, no are, are, are disregarded yeah. entirely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, to me that's the point. Yeah. I mean, how dare our ruling class just do this when they know mm -hmm. there are risks and they don't care. Not for one second. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. just go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's kept quiet so we don't hear about it. The po no, is there a politician in the country who's speaking out against it? I don't know. Yeah. But as you mentioned, um, in, in, in some countries, uh, Brussels has, the city of Brussels has temporarily blocked it because they, s they said, the mayor said, we don't want our citizens to be guinea pigs. Yeah. Other places may be doing it as well. We don't hear, yeah. so we don't know. Yeah. Well, I think a number of countries have taken a stand on it now. Um, I believe there's quite a few. People and are fighting it everywhere, but mm -hmm. you'd never know. Mm -hmm. it doesn't, it's just not there. It's not made a story by mm -hmm. our rulers because they don't want that story told. There's some security and surveillance issues around it as well, of course. So in other words, who, whoever controls this 5G system has, um, as far as I understand it, there's always the potential for some uh, backdoor uh, malfeasance. In other words, whether it's tracking, whether it's collecting information, all of this is possible. Yeah. And that's why there's this great concern, of course, over the Chinese ownership that's been, you know, 
It's been a lot of talk about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can trust the Americans. <laughs> yeah, as if yeah, there's right. one oh of these. Yeah, God, a, a like better, a better uh, one of these. Yeah. 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 No, it's. Uh, I think. I think more. Moreover, I think right now what that amounts to is actually a battle over who gets to be, who gets to collect the information, who gets to be. Um, the service, you know, uh, yeah. running the who gets to run the world? Yeah, well, yeah. Who yeah. gets? Uh, I think there's, uh, if you know, in keeping with what we know about, you know, the, the the this is valuable information. It's almost like there's nothing more valuable right now, um, and uh, so it's it, there's got to be some big players jostling yeah. for that control. Yeah, yeah. You know. I would really like to see um, something along the lines of a citizens' assembly on democracy mm -hmm. set up. Mm -hmm. um, we could do it right here in Victoria. Mm -hmm. um, Vancouver could do it. The province could do it. You know, it could be done federally. Mm -hmm. Just to bring a, a citizens' assembly, just basically randomly picks a group of people. It could be 50 or 100 or 200 or 20, and because people are randomly picked, you try to get a cross-section of the public. Yeah. And the idea is that a citizens' assembly is, therefore, kind of a voice of the people. Mm -hmm. And it would be very interesting to bring together a citizens' assembly and, and have it running on an ongoing basis yeah. over months and even years with people leaving it and new people coming into it and just finding out what... Here, here are these people who represent us, mm -hmm. randomly picked, what do they want? What mm -hmm. do they think? What do we want? What mm -hmm. do we think? Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. that would be great to know because it's in a democracy, which we're not, but mm -hmm. in a real democracy, that's mm -hmm. kind of the most important thing, mm -hmm. is what does the public want? Mm -hmm. Because that's what democracy is really all about. You know, a system just like you're talking about has been, I'm sure there's been a number of examples, but one that I'm familiar with is the one that the Zapatistas, the indigenous, um, basically m the Mayan indigenous uh, in Mexico, uh, 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 and uh, followed a, a, a system like that. So they brought, they, they had um, representatives from each, from all the, the communities um, meet to, over some time Marcos, who was, you know, the sort of face of the Zapatistas oh, at yes, the time, uh, Comandante yeah. Monta, Marcos, was uh, on the record for saying, you know, that democracy moves as slow as uh, as uh, sap. It's, uh, you know, if it's happen, if it's if they're if it's if it's right, if they're doing it right, it's slow moving because y it takes time for people to meet to talk, to figure out what the priorities are and all of this, right? And then a system to move that up from little communities and to kind of bring representatives forward and forward and forward. They had a system um, that they was very successful for them and uh, they made some, uh, some great um, uh, leaps and bounds actually out of that. Those, uh, so uh, it's a great idea. I, I wonder if that's something anybody would support. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if anybody would support it. Um, it's, it's an idea I think people should think about. If we want, I, I think, just if we want to start to move ahead in, in better directions, yeah. we've got to have some big changes. Mm -hmm. And where can the changes come from mm -hmm. that we can trust? Well, mm -hmm. we can't trust the politicians. Mm -hmm. We know that. We can't trust our corporate leadership. Mm -hmm. We can't trust the unions. Mm -hmm. I certainly say that about my own union, the BCGEU, unfortunately. Um, so what's left is, mm -hmm. you know, somebody, some Americans said the only safe place for democracy is in the hands of the people. And really it is o the only safe place because it's got to be spread out, it's got to be grassroots. Once you start getting power, things, it seems, mm -hmm. start to go awry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, I, I hope, you know, there are groups in the province that could put together the small amount of resources needed mm -hmm. to do at least a local. Mm -hmm. In fact, one was done here in mm -hmm. Victoria, uh -huh. uh, maybe I'll say 10 years ago, it could be more or less, I don't really remember. Uh -huh. I was part of, you know, 
just when it, they were first starting to plan it, I went to some meetings. But then Who's I kind of, it was just a group of citizens, just a okay. group of people who were interested in the idea. Yeah. The names, I can sort of remember the names, but I won't put them out. Yeah. Um, I kind of dropped out, but they carried on mm -hmm. and they did it. Yeah. And they brought together a group of people in Fernwood, I think it was. Yeah. And they met over a couple of weekends and they put together just a statement. It's and when I read that statement, uh, no, it was m not that old, not More that long recent. ago. Thank I you. read the statement, yeah. and I if you Google, um, I think it was called Wisdom Council Victoria, uh -huh. you may find the statement, although Google has been certainly disappearing stuff recently. Um, and it was wonderful. Uh -huh. When I read that statement, I thought, this is why we never have citizens' assemblies, right. because they, our rulers, don't uh -huh. want this kind of stuff coming forward. Yeah. It was magnificent. Uh -huh. Yeah, so there's, there's real potential Lots there. Lots of potential. And yeah. maybe groups like Fair Vote Canada, maybe a coalition of groups could pitch in a little bit to make it happen. Yeah, need somebody to sort of take it to on. To something, and, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, it's a, I know you've been touting that for, for a while. It, it's something that w we need. Yeah, something, something we need. Um, Next on the agenda? War of Civilizations. We were talking in the first segment about climate change. Yeah. I sort of get the feeling Extin that extinction rebellion. Yeah. And what in the in order to divert our attention from the real disasters that are happening mm -hmm. societally, economically, environmentally, mm -hmm. our rulership has decided to create a war for us, which is kind of what they do, mm -hmm. right? That's how they keep us divided. That's how they keep us fighting. So. And they have. I mean, they've created a, a system of fear and hate around the world now, deliberately. I mean, none of it was necessary. You know, the, the people who rule the United States, who, I mean, there was no need for them after, you know, after 9-11. Uh, personally, I think the attack of 9-11 was faked. It was done by the deep state. There's, have you heard, you've heard of architects and engineers oh, for, yeah. yeah, so here's yeah. 3,000 architects and engineers. They meet and they discuss this and they go over the science of it and the evidence and everything. And, and they, they say the official story, the official story is can't impossible. Can't be, it's impossible. Right. But based on 9-11, yeah. the yeah. people who run the United States destroyed Afghanistan, yeah. Iraq, Syria, and yeah. Libya. Yeah. They created ISIS. They've thrown the world into fear. And if you Google U.S. funds ISIS, you'll see that a lot of very serious people think that mm -hmm. the U.S. and its allies are the ones behind ISIS, mm -hmm. just in order to create the fear and instability that's needed for them to continue to rule. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do Google it, you'll see a lot fewer stories than you used to, because Google is disappearing those stories, but mm -hmm. such is life. So don't fall for it. That's what I'm saying. Don't believe their story. The media cannot be trusted on this issue, the same as it can't be, unfortunately, on any other issue. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure enough. They've got a profit motive that uh, overrides everything else. It should be obvious. When you open up a paper, whether it's the Globe and Mail, the National Post, or what have you, I mean, you don't get far before there's a full-page ad for an automobile. It, they, they simply, yeah, they're not in the business of, um, of, uh, of going deep on, on any of these stories. But we can be, so we need to build an independent media, and that's what we'll talk about next time because we're out of time this time. All right. Okay. Darren, thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. And thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Walk.